what we've learned in the modern world is that um, the timelines for developing a new drug and the cost of either a new drug or a vaccine keep going up and up and up. So unfortunately, we're now at a point where to bring a new drug to market or a new vaccine to market, it, co it takes more than 10 years and typically more than a billion dollars. Now, we could talk about why that is and that's kind of not our, our remit to, to solve the problems with regulatory strategies, but the truth is that it's just become a burden. And so what we've seen, particularly with infectious disease, and emerging infectious disease is that the pharmaceutical companies can't make a profit on any of these emerging infectious diseases, which is why they're increasingly disinterested. We call it outbreak fatigue. So the whole business model of how we develop medical countermeasures for emerging infectious diseases is broken. One of the only ways out of the woods that many people have started to think about and develop both for oncology and infectious disease is to recognize that we now have a rich pharmacopoeia of compounds with different mechanisms of action and the NIH and others have done a great job of testing the various mechanisms of action and listing this all in a public database so you can find this on PubChem and other resources and um, one now can look at all of the compounds that exist, that have been licensed, for which we already have safety data, we already know how to manufacture, we already know how to dose, and figure out which of those compounds have mechanisms of action that are likely to interact with a virus and block its ability to replicate in tissue. And if we can find compounds and combinations of compounds that have those activities of acting against viral host cell pathways, then the pathway for licensure and the cost drops from a decade or more and a billion dollars or more to down to a range of, in the range of three years and about $50 million. That's a huge difference. Now it's not fast enough because Z as Zika teaches us, some of these emerging infectious diseases move extremely rapidly. In our case, it's taken us about a year to just come up with solid compounds that are good candidates that meet all our criteria of being able to be used in pregnancy, etc. But that's the, the reason for repurposing is that our current business model and regulatory pathways for new drug and new vaccine development are a complete mismatch for emerging infectious disease in terms of time and cost. And we have to find a new solution. Also, behind that is the threat of engineered pathogens, which is really very similar type of threat. So for all of these things, the government, the World Health Organization, all nations now really have to find a better system. And we hope that what we've done in learning about how to repurpose drugs working with the Army and, and the National Cancer Institute is giving us kind of lessons and a path forward that allow us to do this much more efficiently.